There's so many thoughts that I'm thinking, but I don't know how to. So when my husband got sick, I really realized that there's got to be something more than just myself because I knew that I wouldn't make it through if I didn't. And so um, going to Shoal Creek and joining our small group and and just being able to um, get um, connected with the community at Shoal Creek, um, I really started to realize that this is how I wanted to live my life and putting God at the forefront of our lives because um, we lived many years without Him being there. And so um, just uh, realizing the importance of no matter what we're going through and where we're at in our lives that when you've got God at the center of it that you can make it through it it may be hard and it may be ugly at times but um, he's there and he's helping you through and he's holding your hand and telling you that you've got this and um, so I think that's why it's most important to me to, to make um, Jesus accessible um, for other people to to really create that relationship and get to know God on an intimate level. And um, however I can help in that, um, I want to be able to, to do that. You know, there was one day where I was devastated, heartbroken. I knew, you know, I'd been told, like, we're going through a divorce. This is what's happening. And I remember sitting on my bed and just I just opened my Bible and I just started reading it. And it was like this instant weight was lifted off of me. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I told Rachel, I was like, I knew like God was sitting there and he was holding my hand. And he, it was just like him telling me like, you're going to be fine. No matter what this, follow me and we'll make it through. Like, I'm never going to leave you. I mean, that's, that's the constant feeling I've had. I've never, I'm never going to leave you. Follow me and I'll, and I'll show you the way. For a very long time, I had no spiritual path whatsoever. I just was like, I feel like there's a higher power, but um, I don't really know what that looks like. I don't know um, if there is a God, if there's not a God. And I struggled with that for a really long time. And when uh, my husband got sick, I just like said, um, you know what? Like, I probably will never have all the answers, but God is real and he's in my life and he's working and he has his hands in everything. And I want him to be at the center of everything in my life because when that happens, that's when um, that's when the magic happens, when I can hand it over to him and say, I don't have it all. <laughs> it's in your hands. When I got baptized um, a year ago with Rachel, that was a huge experience with me and um, just being a part of my spiritual journey and then, you know, watching Skylar do that as well this past November and just being able to be alongside her throughout her entire spiritual journey. That was huge to see that, you know, from her, from bringing her into my home and, and being able to open up in our group and just helping her along in her spiritual journey is, is huge to be able to look back and see that you had a part in that and, and expanding people's, um, you know, whole mindset and outlook on, on bringing God into part, into their life and making him the center. And, um, like I said, sometimes you don't realize it until it happens that I had a part in that and it, that can be very overwhelming and, and, and joyous as well to see. And that's just having that small hand and that makes me just want to do more and more and more on, on expanding what I can offer people. Because of the way I felt like for many years about God and everything, so I always feel challenged. We, in our group, we talk about um, share our I will and then how are we going to share it. And I feel like sharing is always, um, it's not about just going, have you been saved and like pushing it on someone, but it's about creating relationships. And so um, for me, I'm, I just try to focus on like creating a relationship and getting to know that person, just like how you and Rachel, you know, became friends way before that became um, part of it. So, you know, I think for, for me, um, I, I try to focus on creating those friendships and relationships because that's where God becomes accessible. Um, that's where God, you know, has the opportunity to step in and not be weird or not be awkward. Um, so I think 
For me, it's just trying to, to create those, those relationships so that um, God can be accessible. I, for me, I feel very fortunate in the ways I've been able to make God more accessible in, in the lives of others and in my life for myself. I'm sure even for, for you, you know, when you came into our group of not really knowing many people at first, that can be really scary. So trying to figure out ways to be accessible to, to people that might be more fearful of, of that. You want that to be more of a, um, a relationship type building process. You want them to, to have interest in, in that. So I have loved how I've been able to help and make God accessible to, to others around me and in my life. And that's how Rachel started with me. It wasn't, it was not a, we joined a big group. It was her and I, and we got down to the nitty gritty and, and dove in and that's what then opened me up to to wanting to expand more. So, you know, there's some people that I think can just jump in and others that need need a little bit more time to figure it out themselves.